Hi, I'm Matt Roy. And I'm Casey Reinish. And today we're going to talk about Hawkeye maintenance and pre-application checks. Typically, these would be pre-seasonal. We'd like for them to be done every day, but timing and everything like that, or if you got to go, you got to go. So at, at a minimum, we'd like for these to be done seasonally, right? Yeah. Some of them, you know, seasonally, but some of them you have to do every day. Some some of those uh, boom walk-arounds and, you know, machine checks, uh, checking your strainers and that, some of those definitely every day would be good. But yeah, like you said, some are are on a preseason basis and... And the more the better. Okay. So speaking of strainer, let's just kind of go through what we're looking at with the strainer on this machine. Yeah. So every machine should have at least one inline strainer and it should be an 80 mesh strainer. Uh, some have two, some have a dual inline strainer, but um, with Hawkeye, we recommend at least one 80 mesh. And, you know, before the season, you definitely want to make sure, take it out, clean it up good. Uh, this one ended up being fairly clean, but you do see a little bit of debris in the bottom of it. Right. Um, you know, it, as far as cleaning out, you might find rocks. You might find just buildup of chemical. You might find uh, plastic parts from the tanks. Right. And that all, you know, the more you, you plug it up, the more the pump has to work, the more issues we're going to actually have with pressure control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can see it down there. There's a little bit, but not too bad. You bring up the plastic parts, and we've seen some issues in the past where you see some of that stuff getting j like jammed and lodged in the flow meters. Right. So anything gets jammed in there, that, that turbine's not going to spin. We're not going to have a rate. So it's like you might want to check here, and then uh, probably at a minimum, if that machine is new, I would say probably check the flow meter too, wouldn't you? Right. You know, there's there's plastic debris from the tank that doesn't get cleaned out, and that you know hits the flow meter right away, and you can mm -hmm. actually take that flow meter out and see scuff marks on those turbines so you know stuff is yeah. is going by there but you know it's it's just not only the stuff in the tank that obviously the strainer is going to have a tough time picking that up because it's after the mm -hmm. after the system but you know some of those guys they'll take out they'll take out the strainers because they just don't want to deal with the hassle and the strainers are for a reason you know the right. the little small orifice that is the hawkeye poppet and the Hawkeye nozzle, you know, the strainer's there to protect that. And I'd rather clean out one location than 72 locations. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe 72, yeah. maybe 105. Or, yeah, you know. maybe more, depending on how many nozzles you have. So it's it's for the better, you know, to, to get that cleaned up every day. Make sure, it's, make sure it's clean and make sure, you know, at least before the season starts that you do have an 80 mesh in there. Right. That it didn't get switched out with a different 50 mesh or a, a bigger you know, opening on that. So, so probably the next thing that we'll want to do is walk down the boom and look, and what are we looking for there? Yeah. So just a visual inspection of the machine, uh, cables and poppets and nozzle tips. You can see here that's right at the boom fold. So it, the, the cable is a little bit loose. Um, you know, you see that boom, the breakaway there, I guess mm -hmm. we'll need room for that boom to fold back. So this one could be tied up a little bit, but, um, We'll, we'll tie it up later on that one. So as you see, we get down here. This is a good indicator of how that should be tied up. You know, that's following the plumbing around the bend. Um, it's tied up, you know, two zip ties. It could use an extra one there. But uh, we want to make sure every bend is tied up nice and neat. And we get down here a little bit further, and that's how we don't want it. <laughs> um, you know, cables drooping down and, and a big loop on that cable. That's what we don't want to see. Mm -hmm that cable moving back and forth continuously wearing and tearing right. on that nozzle. Um, it's just going to wear those pins out and, and those connectors and, and eventually pull out the wires and the right. connectors. And then we have a lot of issues. I suppose they probably could potentially catch on other parts of the boom and say when you're folding and unfolding. Right. Yep. Folding, unfolding, you know, if the way this machine folds, those, those booms tip back and that cable might droop down and, and catch on a, angle bracket or another nozzle and tear that nozzle off or rip the cable off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's a number of different things it could come in contact with. Um, but just going through here, checking all the NCVs, making sure they're blinking the same color. You know, you don't necessarily need to know exactly what the nozzle LED light is doing, mm -hmm. but at least so it's consistent with the rest. And right. then if there's an issue, 
if one is, is blinking an odd color, you can definitely address that one. But as long as they're blinking the same colors, more than likely they're all okay. But making sure all those 19 pins, we can, we can take a look at those, make sure they're sealed up well. Right. Um, take them apart here after a bit and make sure that there's no corrosion or no water intrusion or anything in the 19 pins. But mainly just making sure everything is tied up nice and neat and, and out of the way so you're not going right. to catch anything and not run into issues uh, during the, the spring season and, and for that day in particular. This is something that you'd want to do you know, every morning when you go out there and, and start the machine up. Again, just going through here, making sure every nozzle has a tip on it and making sure they're all the same, uh, whether it's an 08 or 04, whatever okay. uh, style you're, you're using that day. Just make sure they're all rotated the, the same uh, orientation on that. Right here, we're just checking the relays. So these would be the relays for the nozzle power. Okay. So we definitely need, there would be three relays on every system. These are the adapter cables. Right. Um, and, and for the, the newer cables that have the relays built into them, uh, but they still they're still external like that, aren't they? There's a typically external or a little relay box with the fuses in there. But this one you see there's three on each side. Uh, yep. A lot of the newer style cables just have three total. Okay, so as you're as you're uh, taking apart those 19 pin connectors and and checking those connections for corrosion and everything, one thing that we'd probably do to safeguard from corrosion as well as right, you know, maybe uh try to reduce whatever is on there. What do we recommend using? Yeah, so you see here we've got some Corrosion X HD, and it's very similar or does the same thing to dielectric grease, but it's a little easier to apply. It's a little more forgiving. And this would be something that you'd want to do at least at the start of every year. Once we get it sprayed in there, it should last all year long. Um, but, yeah, just take apart every 19 pin. As you have them disconnected, just inspect them. Make sure there's no blue fuzz or anything growing in those connectors. Make sure that okay. no, none of the pins are pushed back, that type of thing. Make sure everything looks well. You'll see here as I spray a little bit in here, it foams up, comes in contact with all those pins. And that's about all you need to make sure everything is going to be protected for the whole season. And so you don't you don't need to wipe it down. Right. Spray it in there. Just spray it in there. Make sure everything is coated well. And it it does, as you see, it foams up there and, and uh, reconnect things and you're good to go. If you see here, we, we're taking all of the six pin connectors apart as well prior to the season. Again, the same as the 19 pins, just taking them apart, making sure that there is no buildup of any sort in there, make sure all the pins look good and shined up. Make sure there's those seals around the outside, those orange seals okay. to protect the system. Over time, those might get lost right. or, or broken. And then we do the same thing here. We, we spray in some of that corrosion XHD, let it foam up really good, and plug in that connector again. And we recommend the Corrosion X HD. Uh, you can get it in, in an online retailer, probably just about yeah. any one of them. You know, wherever yeah, you, you shop can, online, you can probably try to find it. Find it online. We also offer a kit with that in there. So, I mean, you can get it from us, but um, the kit that we offer has more cleaning. You know, if there was some corrosion that was built mm -hmm. up, we offer some some additional products in that kit to help you clean that and some brushes and stuff. So it's, okay. it's definitely a useful kit. So we're going to take a look at the node box here. Um, all the electronics, the main ECU that controls the Hawkeye system is located uh, up in this box here. So, you know, at the end of the day or end of the week, when we're cleaning up those machines and taking a pressure washer to them, don't spray directly on any of the electronics. Uh, that includes the Hawkeye ECU in this box here. Mm -hmm. Every machine is going to be located different. And then the nozzle bodies themselves. So anytime you pressure wash it, Water has the ability to get in there a little bit easier, and that's not going to be good long term for the Hawkeye system. So, right, you can kind of skirt around those areas and, and get everything else cleaned up, but just leave the electronics by themselves. So, here we're going to show some NCV maintenance. So, this would be something that we recommend every 500 hours to go through and take a look at these poppets mm -hmm. and replace the poppets. So, you see here, I, I'm taking my valve wrench, taking a look at the O rings in there. And here I'm going to take apart that valve body and pull that Hawkeye, the, the actual poppet inside of that out and see what it looks like. See if it does need some attention. So that valve wrench that I used to take off that fly nut and then also this quarter inch socket, 
we include that in the Hawkeye kits, in a valve maintenance kit. So uh, that should all be included. Uh, so definitely uh, use those. It, it is very helpful in, in getting those valve bodies off. Take a look at the O-rings. There's a, an O-ring on the inner face of that and then on the, the outside there. Take a look at those. And so, and here we're looking at, we're looking at the poppet itself within that NCV. What kinds of things are we looking for? Yeah, so first and foremost, that uh, the rubber face of that, uh, just to make sure it's smooth, make sure there's no indentations, um, just make sure it, it can make a good seal if it comes in contact with anything. And take a look inside and just make sure that there's no abnormal wear, you know, on the inside. It should be, you know, shiny and you shouldn't see any uh, scuff marks or anything out of the ordinary when you look inside of there. But this one's good. This one's been in operation just for a little bit. So we'll put that one back and it's good to go for the season. As we were down towards the uh, one side of the boom there is we want to be looking at the plumbing. Right. We're going to be making sure, what, what are we looking for? Like cracked hoses and things like that? Or? Yep. You know, especially at the beginning of the year, you want to make sure all your delivery system is still in check. So make sure all the tubes, you know, make sure we don't have any cracked fittings. If you did have the system pressurized, you know, we don't hear, but you could just make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Um, there's a lot of banjo fittings that would have seals that over time could deteriorate. Mainly checking the hosing and, and tubes for cracks and checks. Right. Make sure that once pressurized that we're not going to have any issues. So once we get up in the cab here, first and foremost thing we can check is just to make sure there is no DTCs that are coming up on the screen, uh, whether it's a yellow or red bell. And if there is, you know, at that point we'd have to press on the bell and find out what that DTC is. It might be a such thing that, you know, at the beginning of the year, uh, we may have to re-index the nozzles. Mm -hmm. Be a good idea just to try and re-index rather than reset defaults. If you need to reset defaults, uh, you can go to your summary page, make sure you write down all your settings. While you're at the summary page, it'd be a good idea to check out all those values before you start for the day and make sure that you have a meter cal in there. Make sure all the boom is set up like it's supposed to be. Um, if there's a different operator in there spraying differently, uh, they may have had that machine set up different and, and we want to make sure that all those values are, are set uh, for the current application. So be a good idea to check out that summary screen and then also at the beginning of every day under the diagnostic info tab, there is a screen that shows all of the NCVs, their serial number, software version, and voltage. Just go in there and make sure all those values, uh, a lot of them are gonna be the same you know, for mm -hmm. voltage and, and uh, software version, but just make sure everything is checking in and, and make sure we're not missing any information on that screen. Because if we are, that might lead to some issues we have to try and diagnose. Is there a voltage range we'd want to be looking for with those NCVs? Yeah. So all that, uh, all the voltages on that screen would be machine voltage. Okay. So, you know, at least 12 volts. Um, it's going to range from, you know, 11 to 13 plus, you know, while mm -hmm. you're sitting still. Once they're turned on and operational, they may drop just a half of a volt just because of the load that's put on the system, but you'd be looking for machine voltage. Okay. So also while we're on the diagnostic info screen, uh, you know, check out all the values on here. Your high current voltage should be machine voltage. Your logic voltage should be five volts. Uh, some of these values aren't going to populate until the machine is up and running, but uh, at the bottom there, the... ISO can errors, we want to make sure that is a fairly low number. And the biggest thing is just to make sure it's not counting up okay. by the tens and twenties. If it's counting up, that'd be a good indicator that we have some issues going on. Um, on the CAN bus, we'll probably have some DTCs to follow too, but um, make sure that is a, a fairly steady number. So we have the, the ISO can errors here. And then if we page over, we also have the NCV can errors. Uh, so that would be for the NCV bus. So it would be two different, two different spots there. To kind of sum this up, we covered some seasonal checks and we covered some of the pre-application checks, the daily checks. Um, so what are we looking at for seasonal? Yeah, so the seasonal checks, that's going to be making sure those NCVs are clean and make sure that the corrosion X is sprayed in there and everything mm -hmm. is good to go for the seals. And also going through the boom plumbing, 
And don't forget to check your poppets every 500 hours for that preseason checklist uh, just for the, the wear and tear on mm-hmm. those. And checking to make sure you have an 80 mesh strainer uh, before we start the season too. And making sure it's clean and right. The, the strainer can be, you know, make sure we have an 80 mesh to start with, but then, you know, we'll have to make sure it's check for cleanliness as the season goes through. Right. More of a, a combination on the daily and preseason on that one. Okay. And then for the daily checks, we're looking, uh, checking our tips, checking the NCV lights, uh, right. just making sure everything's, you know, just walking through, making sure everything's still connected. You don't have a broken connector. Make sure the cable's looking good, you know, just yeah. that the visual inspection of the boom, more or less. Right. Once we get up in the cab, make sure all the settings, uh, go to your summary page, make sure there's no DTCs and make sure, you know, the response rate and, mm-hmm. and meter cows are are set uh, appropriately for what we're applying. Another thing at the end of the day, uh, we want to make sure that system is fully clean so we don't have issues the next day. Um, so what we're going to recommend is if we can flush that boom out, if you have any tank cleaner, if it is a, a chemical that does need a tank cleaner, we'll have to get a tank cleaner that's compatible and follow okay. the tank cleaner recommendations. And also flush the boom out after that tank cleaner has been fully implemented, you know, make sure that, uh, there is no tank cleaner left. And so the tank cleaners for the non-water based products for the most part. Yeah. It's and for, and we're using right. what soap and water for the, the water based products. Yep. Completely flush that right. as well. Yep. Get all that out of the boom. Some booms have a, an air clean out. So that might be utilized on, uh, some OEM machines, but, um, yeah, just get everything. Once the tank cleaner is done, get that out of the system as well. All right. Thanks, guys.